Well, I'm sorry I'm late. I was uh, actually uh, on the internet exploring NORAD's new Santa website. Have you had a chance to look at that yet? Santa, the Santa website. Oh, Santa website. Yeah, it's pretty, uh, pretty slick. Have you had a chance to look at that? You might want to, uh, might want to log on to it. Uh, it's uh, www.noradsanta.org, and uh, it it uh, contains a lot of interesting information, including Santa secrets. Um, it answers the question: Is there a Santa? So um, it has a lot of uh, nifty graphics, and all this is done free to the taxpayer and free to the government by uh, um, organizations working with NORAD. So, about the radar, NORAD used to track Santa? well, it does talk about how NORAD tracks Santa. So it's one of the, it's one of the things you can find out. I don't want to reveal a lot of the secrets that are on this website here, but you can get them on your own by uh, logging on to the address I uh, I uh, gave you. Do they have a historical track record? They do. Um, they have uh, apparently been tracking Santa for 43 years. And um, they do have quite a lot of historical information. Some of it goes back several thousand years because they've done some research and incorporated it into their uh, information base. So I commend this uh, to all of you who are interested in tracking Santa for the next couple of, uh, couple of weeks. Of course, the, uh, the information accumulates and builds uh, to a real uh, pitch of excitement by, uh, by Christmas Day. Is this the first year you have this website? This is the first year I've spoken about this website, and it's gone so well, I may do it every year. <laughs> um, I, I believe NORAD has uh, done this in the past, but um, uh, they, they do have a, a lot of rich history on there, so um, I urge you to, uh, to log on and find out for yourselves. Any more questions about uh, NORAD Santa website? Are you through? I'm not through. If you have more questions, I'm ready to answer them on uh, NORAD or any other uh, topic. Uh, how does the SACDAF feel about the release of Jonathan Pollard, the, the president has asked his senior uh, advisors to? The president has um, asked uh, the attorney general and the director of central intelligence and the secretary of defense to uh, give him uh, uh, recommendations by uh, January 11th, and Secretary Cohen will do that. And I think it's uh, premature to discuss what his recommendation will be until then. Well, it seems that Pollard's activities affected this building as much, or perhaps more than any other. Well, other uh, as, I, as I said, I don't want to suggest that there'll be. Uh, 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 President Clinton has reviewed this now twice and um, has uh, uh, decided against uh, releasing Jonathan Pollard. He has um, uh, now undertaken another review. I have uh, uh, no reason to expect that there will be uh, major changes in, in the uh, advice he gets from, uh, from some quarters, but I think that we just have to let that play out. Every department will look at uh, the information at its disposal and make up its decision and send it to the president. I mean, in, in the past, has this building opposed any release of Jonathan Pollard? Um, in the past, uh, it has, yes. Is there anything in particular that uh, the Secretary will be doing between now and January 11th uh, as, you know, in, in preparing? Well, our goal is to, pu is to pull together a unified Department of Defense um, uh, position on this. Uh, that's the Secretary's goal. So he'll be... Uh, Obviously, uh, uh, he'll be getting input from the Navy, and he'll be getting input from various intelligence uh, offices in the Department of Defense, and he'll pull that together into uh, one recommendation and send it to the President. Will you be reviewing the damage that was done uh, uh, by Pollard's uh, espionage activity? Um, I'm, I'm, sh I'm sure that various agencies will reassess the, uh, uh, the damage, yes. Yes. Does he get a, a specific assessment from the Defense Intelligence Agency on this, or does that go? Well, I'm his? not. We haven't. Uh, uh, we just got the letter fairly recently, and we're in the process of uh, of organizing to produce a response. And I don't know the details of exactly what will happen, but um, we are trying to pull together 
uh, information, views, analysis from all parts of the Defense Department, package it into, uh, into one recommendation and send it over to the President. Uh, can you say what, how, how long has it been since there's been a review of this situation? Is I think the last or? one uh, was in uh, 95 or 96, I believe. Can you say on two separate points here that, that uh, the number one that the building has in the past opposed the release of Pollard, but you also said, correct me if I'm wrong, that, that you had no reason to believe that there would be any change. Well, I'm not aware that there is new information available at this stage, but one of the reasons for having a review is to look at, uh, is to look at what's out there. I'm not aware that there is any new information, but um, one of the things that all people will be looking at is whether there is new information or whether it should be viewed in a different light. That's all part of the analysis. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, Jamie. I have a new subject. Unless there's more in this. New subject. Okay. Um, can you just tell me if the Secretary is satisfied with the Navy's handling of the disposition of the case against Admiral uh, John Scuddy, uh, who apparently now will be allowed to, uh, to retire and receive an honorable discharge? Um, after non-judicial punishment instead of uh, proceeding to any sort of criminal uh, proceedings? Well, I haven't had a chance to discuss this case um, with the Secretary. It was handled uh, entirely by the Navy uh, through their own uh, judicial process. And uh, uh, as you know, he's uh, incurred a fairly substantial penalty. He'll be giving up, uh, um, if you assume, uh, an average uh, life expectancy for uh, Admiral Scuddy. Uh, who's being reduced in rank to Captain Scuddy, as a matter of fact. Uh, he'll be giving up almost $600,000 in, in income, uh, depending on the inflation rate uh, you choose. And uh, uh, as I said, he's, being, he's taken off a list to be promoted to two-star admiral, and he's being dropped back to uh, the rank of captain from the rank of rear admiral lower half. Uh, in addition, he um, is giving up some immediate income and facing some other penalties. So I'd say this is a significant penalty, uh, but I have not discussed it with the Secretary. Is there a chance that the Secretary of the Navy would, uh, would, would not grant him an honorable discharge? I think that's a question you'll have to ask the Secretary of the Navy. I haven't discussed it with him either. Well, because if he, if he were to get an honorable discharge and say someone like uh, Kelly Flynn, did not receive the less than honorable discharge, doesn't that simply fuel the perception that senior officers have one uh, standard and then there's a, there's a tougher standard for junior officers and enlisted people? Well, first of all, there are a lot of ifs in your statement, at least two ifs, so there are hypotheticals built in there. I think rather than speculate about what type, type of dis discharge he will get, um, we should just wait and see what the facts are. I don't know what type he'll get. Uh, as you pointed out, uh, Kelly Flynn, Lieutenant Flynn, got a general discharge, um, which um, was part of a settlement in lieu of a court-martial. Uh, I think that rather than speculate, we ought to find out the facts of what type of discharge he's getting. The facts of each case is different, and therefore the outcome of each case is different. Bill. Uh, Ken, to change the subject. Uh, Yesterday, the uh, spokesman at the State Department said that negotiations with Panama uh, to continue to use uh, Howard Air Force Base for the drug interdiction, uh, uh, they were dead. Those negotiations died, I think, back in September. My first question is, is that the way the DOD sees it, that Panama is not going to be available uh, uh, at the end of next year for U.S. basing? Uh, and uh, second, uh, uh, was there any success uh, this this past trip of the of the SecDef to find other Latin American nations that would base uh, the uh, U.S. planes uh, used in that uh, drug interdiction and finally can you comment on the choice of Puerto Rico as the new headquarters uh, for that uh, drug uh, drug work? Okay, uh, you've asked a lot of questions. First. Um, uh, we uh, are preparing to move all U.S. troops out of Panama um, as scheduled by the end of 1999. Uh, we see nothing that will interrupt that movement. Uh, we did have some discussions with the Panamanians about a continued U.S. presence, but those discussions uh, uh, did not amount to anything. 
and uh, Howard Air Force Base specifically, we plan to be out by May 1st of uh, 1999. Uh, some of the uh, of the military elements um, are either in the process of moving to or have been moved to Puerto Rico. That includes um, uh, the uh, U.S. Army um, uh, s South. Uh, also, some of the, I think the Air Force headquarters will be moved there as well. In addition, we would like to uh, uh, negotiate access to military facilities uh, in the Caribbean and in Latin America. Uh, we would like to have uh, uh, access to what we call a forward operating location, uh, another one in the Caribbean. Uh, we would probably like um, uh, uh, one or two in Central America, and uh, maybe uh, access to uh, several forward op operating locations along the Andean spine of South America. Um, we're in the process of talking to uh, uh, countries about that, and uh, those uh, talks uh, are continuing. And has Colombia turned the U.S. down entirely on basing? Um, I'm not uh, aware that we have specifically, uh, we have reached the point of, of uh, asking people and, and uh, sealing deals at this time. Uh, one thing that is very clear to us and to our uh, friends in the region is that, the, uh, uh, that a continued U.S. presence in the region has many benefits. And those benefits were demonstrated by our rapid response to the devastation of Hurricane Mitch. Uh, we had um, uh, aircraft uh, in Honduras, and uh, as a result, they were able to begin rescue operations even before the, the storm had ended. And that probably contributed to uh, uh, saving uh, hundreds of lives that might not have been saved uh, if we didn't have uh, helicopters and planes in the area. In addition, uh, the fact that we had uh, aircraft in the area at uh, Sotocano made it uh, easier for us to uh, begin the aid flow very quickly. So I think there are a lot of uh, benefits to continuing U.S. presence in the region. I'm confident that uh, other countries appreciate those benefits, and I'm confident that, um, that we will be able to uh, negotiate uh, access to uh, um, locations as we need to. Yes. I uh, heard that the secretary uh, might address the graduating class at the Marshall Center in Garmisch on his upcoming trip to Europe. Can you confirm that and possibly also this might, uh, He's currently scheduled to do that, yes. Do you have a rough sketch of the itinerary? What, uh, um, the I don't have it uh, on me, but we can get it for you. Yes. I have an F-18 question. The secretary received a letter a week ago from Sec uh, Senator Russell Feingold of Wisconsin asking that he commission an Inspector General's review of performance issues on the F-18. The Senator asked that the IG look into this before the next batch of money, about two and a half billion dollars, be put on contract. What's the Secretary's current thinking on whether to launch or initiate an IG review? Well, the Secretary's been out of town uh, most of the time since uh, that letter uh, uh, arrived, and I, I seem to me, looking back on it, it reached the press before it reached his office. Um, I was very surprised by that, uh, but um, I, I don't believe he's, I mean, obviously he'll look into the situation and respond to the letter. I don't believe he has done that yet. Can you take that as a question in terms of when you might respond? Because there's lots of Well, we're going to respond to the letter, and I think probably the best way to handle it is when he responds to the letter. Um, I'm sure Senator Feingold will release the response uh, to the letter, but we'll try to release it to you as soon as we can. What's your response to the latest Iraqi charge that um, the use of depleted uranium uh, munitions during the Gulf War has resulted in a health hazard that's uh, resulting in increased cancer rates in Iraq? Can you comment on that? Well, I think that it's uh, completely unfounded. I understand that Saddam Hussein of Iraq is holding a, uh, a conference um, on environmental um, uh, hazards or degradation uh, in uh, in Iraq now. I, I suppose uh, uh, 
being called an environmental violator by uh, Saddam Hussein has about as much weight as being called a human rights violator by Saddam Hussein. Um, he attacked Iraq, he attacked uh, Kuwait and uh, started a war which um, he refused to withdraw from Kuwait and therefore uh, provoked attacks by uh, an alliance against him. Uh, he, when he left Kuwait, he uh, set oil fires, uh, set oil wells on fire, uh, fouling the atmosphere for uh, weeks and even months and uh, creating a health hazard. Um, he has used poison gas against his own people, uh, the Kurds, and uh, he has used poison gas against the Iranians. Um, the area in which, the, if there is an increased incidence of cancer, and we only have the Iraqi assertions that there are at this stage. But if there are increased um, incidence of cancer among children, uh, it could well be that uh, this comes from the use of uh, mustard gas uh, in that area by Iraqi forces uh, during its war against Iran. Uh, there was a study done, a medical study done, of the uh, uh, impact of uh, uh, birth defects and uh, other uh, health uh, problems among uh, Iranian children born uh, of parents who had been the victims of mustard gas attacks by Iraq. Um, the uh, the uh, article was called uh, Congenital Malformations in the Progenies of Iranian Chemical Victims, and it showed that the uh, uh, that the rate of malformations among children of parents who had been gassed by Iraq was uh, eight to ten times higher than the malformation rate um, in children from parents who had not been gassed. So I think that there's a, uh, uh, if there is a higher incidence of cancer, it could well result from the use of gas um, in this area. Um, we, of course, have done extensive research on uh, depleted uranium. We did use depleted uranium rounds um, uh, in the war against uh, Iraqi tanks. Um, we destroyed 3,700 out of about 4,200 Iraqi tanks uh, uh, faced during the war. I think the, uh, so these uh, depleted uranium rounds fired either by, uh, by aircraft such as the A-10 or by tanks were extremely successful. I would argue um, that the primary health uh, threat faced by somebody uh, hit with a depleted uranium round was the explosion of the tank in which he was sitting, um, not anything else. Depleted uranium is just that. It has, uh, it's uh, uranium that has had its um, uh, radiation content reduced dramatically. It um, uh, is a heavy metal and is about as radioactive as lead, maybe somewhat less so. Um, uh, we don't believe that uh, normal exposure to this uh, creates cancer, and we have not found that to be the case. We are still examining uh, uh, the results of exposure to depleted uranium, but in the case of the Gulf War, we do not believe that there is a link to cancer. We have not found one at this stage. Um, one of our studies actually involves um, 33 uh, uh, American uh, veterans who were seriously injured in friendly fire incidents involving depleted uranium. And I think uh, uh, Dr. Bernard Rosker briefed you on this some time ago because he's done a paper as part of his, uh, um, his, uh, uh, part of his studies of Gulf War illnesses. And uh, 33 of those people have fragments of depleted uranium uh, in their bodies. And uh, we have not found that there's been any higher incidence of cancer among the offspring of these, uh, of these uh, soldiers um, than, than normal. Now, this is not dispositive, and it's hard to be dispositive because we don't have good medical information from Iraq about um, the health history. One, we don't know if these allegations are true. Um, merely because they've been made by the Iraqis does not make them true. Uh, and two, we don't have enough other information 
about um, uh, exposure to uh, poisonous gases or uh, fire from uh, burning oil wells that may have wafted uh, from Kuwait over Iraq, or other exposure to uh, potentially uh, uh, carcinogenic materials to know what to make of these charges. Is there any evidence that you're aware of that exposure to the dust that's created from um, uh, expending one of these munitions presents a health hazard in any form? And two, would you support some sort of independent international health study to, uh, to answer the question more definitively? Well, first, um, I I'm not aware of any uh, um, uh, studies that show that the dust uh, leads to cancer, a higher incidence of cancer. On the second point about an independent review, it is my understanding that Iraq uh, did invite the World Health Organization in uh, to uh, review the health of uh, children in southern Iraq, that the World Health Organization uh, produced a report which the Iraqis have refused to release. Uh, yes, Brian. Uh, sure. Um, on North Korea, I was wondering if you can comment first on um, the Pentagon's response or any steps that might be taken following North Korean threats yesterday of putting its forces on alert um, over this issue of their suspected nuclear site, um, as well as what the Pentagon's latest estimate is on when they may test another missile? Well, I want to get into uh, intelligence estimates or analysis. I've certainly read many reports in the press um, that there is an expectation that, uh, that uh, North Korea may test another <coughs> missile this month. Uh, it's the third day of the month. I guess time will tell. Um, uh, we know that they have. Uh, tested missiles in the past and assume that they'll test missiles in the future. So it wouldn't be uh, hugely surprising if they were to have another test. It would, however, be very disappointing if they were to uh, test again, uh, because we've urged them uh, uh, not to proceed with tests, and we've urged them not to proceed with uh, uh, missile sales to other countries as well. Uh, and we will continue to urge them uh, against uh, further tests, because we think it's uh, destabilizing. Jamie seemed to be seemed to be steering people away from an imminent test yesterday at the State Department briefing yesterday without going into into intelligence details. Can you tell us have there been any signs that they might be preparing for a test soon? You mean like public newspaper articles in the North no. Korean press? <laughs> no. Have there been any signs that North Korea might be no, preparing? No. Well, I mean, how can I do that without going into Where? intelligence details? Um, I just think that. Um, uh, uh, certainly, there are a lot of uh, newspaper reports uh, suggesting that they're preparing for another test. I can't uh, confirm those reports, and I can't talk about our own intelligence analysis. So the, the first part of my question about uh, I think it was the North Korean press agency yesterday came out with a story that said that North Korean forces were being put on alert and to go to war with the United States. Um, should it come to that over the suspected nuclear weapons site that we want to get access to. Have there been any changes in the, in the status of our forces in South Korea in response to that? Um, uh, let me, first of all, the North Korean forces have recently started their winter training exercise, which they undertake uh, at about this uh, time of year uh, annually. Uh, uh, second, um, they, from time to time, make bellicose statements um, suggesting that um, uh, they're about to be attacked. Um, I'm not uh, aware um, uh, that there's any basis for these statements right now. Uh, they may be doing this more for internal reasons than for external reasons. I, I can't psychoanalyze uh, the North Koreans and, and the public statements they make. Um, third. Our forces uh, in South Korea are, uh, are very alert all the time. Uh, we uh, uh, monitor uh, what the North Koreans are doing, 
and um, I'm not aware at this stage that there's uh, anything out of the ordinary uh, going on uh, beyond the winter training exercises that usually take place at, at this time of the year. Um, uh, uh, fourth, um, were the North Koreans uh, to miscalculate and um, uh, 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 take some unfortunately provocative action, we would be ready to respond very quickly and very decisively. And if I could, the, um, uh, some of the North Korean uh, statements uh, by the North Korean military were, were directed at this uh, uh, new uh, military strategy that calls for, U.S. military strategy that calls, apparently calls for uh, uh, a, uh, an offensive response in case, in case of attack rather than just repelling a, a North, North Korean uh, assault. Uh, ha has uh, the U.S. briefed the North Koreans in any general's talks on, on any, you know, on what their strategy is now uh, and any changes in it? Um, we do not have a practice of briefing the North Koreans on our military well, posture or strategy, um, and uh, and I and I'm not aware that we've started recently. But l let me address the the bigger issue. Um, uh, there was a newspaper uh, story uh, alleging a new operating plan or strategy um, from uh, toward North Korea. Um, I'm not aware that that was an accurate account. I'm not aware that it was accurate. Said, you're, not, you're not aware it's accurate. Right. Because one of the things that report said is that the outlines of this plan would be uh, would be briefed in or would be uh, laid out to the North Koreans in general talks. Has that? Has well, that there haven't been any happened? recent general talks that I'm aware of. Um, there were some talks. I don't think there have been any recent ones. No. No? Well, tomorrow yeah. there will be talks in New York, but those are over um, access to the underground facilities that we want to uh, want to analyze. Uh, Ken, to, drawn from the Washington Post article, uh, today's uh, bird, uh, it says that how do you how does the United States respond to the general staff of North Korea's uh, People's Army saying that Washington was heightening you tension? In you already responded to that. Washington was heightening tension by demanding inspections and talks aimed at preventing North Korea from developing nuclear weapons and long-range missiles. That it's our fault that there are heightened tensions. No, well, I think it's balderdash. Balderdash. Yes. Why not? One of the defense ministers in North Korea said something along the lines of, our people's army will blow up the U.S. territory as a whole if the U.S. starts a war on the peninsula. Well, we don't talk about operating, we, we don't talk about operating plans. Um, uh, we have a very significant military force in South Korea to protect the South Koreans and to protect our interests. That's all I can say about it. Yes? Um, uh, the Secretary was on the Hill yesterday uh, briefing uh, senators about Iraq. Um, can you give us any readout of that session? Uh, was there any reason for it? to be taking place? Huh. Any new well, it was requested by, uh, by members of the Senate. As you know, the Senate, uh, members of the Senate have been in town this week to uh, deal with uh, internal elections, leadership posts, et cetera. And uh, some members of the Senate uh, asked for a briefing. We hadn't had an opportunity to do normal consultations in terms of meetings uh, back in November because the uh, most members of Congress weren't here immediately after the elections. Uh, Fifty senators showed up, and they were uh, brought up to date on the uh, uh, situation with Iraq by uh, uh, Secretary Cohen, Secretary Albright, uh, uh, National Security Advisor Berger, and I believe also the Chairman, uh, General Shelton, was there. Uh, they uh, talked about um, uh, the events of uh, November 14th and 15th, uh, what led up to the, um, to what led to our decision to uh, 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 launch an attack and then uh, call it back or, or uh, before it uh, started uh, to cancel the plans. They talked about the uh, uh, negotiations with the uh, UN. They talked about um, the inspections uh, uh, taking place and that the ones we assume will take place in the future, hope will take place in the future. 
uh, and that was basically the, uh, uh, it was a briefing. It was to bring them up to date, and uh, just as uh, the President and uh, Secretary Cohen and, and uh, General Shelton and Mr. Berger brought the press up to date and the nation up to date on November 15th at the White House. Uh, Senator uh, Kibbe Hutchinson complained afterwards that, uh, uh, well, described the session, I guess, as being fairly lively and that people did complain to the uh, uh, secretaries that uh, there's been too much threatening of bombing and then no bombing taking place. Um, Secretary Cohen have any description of the meeting that coincides with that, or is that a? I think that um, that our um, policy has been described by uh, by President Clinton and by Secretary Cohen. Um, I think we've put uh, Iraq on notice that uh, uh, they won't have the type of notice next time that they had last time, and that they should. Uh, uh, comply with the UN Security Council mandates and allow the inspectors to do their job. Yes. Just Brian. a quick one. Housekeeping. The secretary plan to send a nomination up to the Hill anytime soon for an Air Force secretary? I'll have to check on that. I don't know exactly where that stands. Um, uh, it's uh, clearly uh, one of the important decisions on his, uh, on his agenda. I just don't know exactly where we are in the process, but I'll check. Ken, how about the meeting today with the uh, Pakistani Prime Minister? Could you fill us in on it? Well, uh, the, uh, uh, there were several um, uh, elements to it. Uh, um, one, as you know, there have been some discussions between the Prime Minister Sharif and President Clinton about uh, ways to resolve the F-16 controversy. Um, those uh, discussions were continued here. Uh, I have no more details about those. Uh, the, the Secretary also discussed our concerns about proliferation uh, with, uh, with, pa with the Pakistani Prime Minister and um, uh, other uh, areas of bilateral and regional interest. They've also, there are also reports that, the, that the New Zealand is going to buy the F-16. So is there any... Uh well, I've seen those reports, and I think we should just uh, wait until uh, um, and to see uh, if and when there's an announcement to be made. We hope there will be something to say soon, but there isn't right now. And when an announcement is made, um, it's likely to, uh, I think it should appropriately come, appropriately come from the White House. Yes? Uh, is there a chance, did they discuss the possibility of resuming or renewing uh, a military cooperation between the United States and Pakistan? Well, that uh, broadly was one of the questions, but um, the more immediate question was uh, what steps can Pakistan take to address our concerns about nonproliferation uh, that would be necessary in order to um, uh, help reestablish a, uh, a fuller military relationship? Just, uh, just one more. I think tomorrow there will be a historic uh, cooperation between the U.S. Navy and the PLA, uh, something called CEREX. Yeah. Well, my, we have had a search and rescue exercises um, uh, with Hong Kong before. And this search and rescue exercise um, is another one with Hong Kong. It is my understanding that there are uh, uh, could be some participation by a, uh, a, a Chinese ship uh, in this exercise. It is, as I said, a search and rescue exercise. We, our participation is relatively modest. I think it's limited to aircraft. There's a uh, Coast Guard aircraft, uh, helicopter. I think there's a uh, Navy a P-3 uh, involved and there may be one other aircraft involved as well. And a relatively limited number of people. I think there, there may be just 22 Americans involved in this and uh, some uh, air assets from Hong Kong. And now I understand also a, a, a ship from the Chinese Navy. Ken, uh, does, does, oh, do you have a follow-up on that? Oh, I just, uh, but this does set a precedent, doesn't it? No. Uh, the Chinese have uh, participated in, um, they have observed military exercises uh, that have been uh, orchestrated by the United States before. But um, 
I'm not aware that they've actually participated in an exercise like this. Does, yes. Uh, does yesterday's apprehension of uh, this General Christic, uh, an indicted war criminal in Bosnia, indicate uh, uh, an increased or renewed effort to round up war criminals in, in Bosnia? I think it indicates a continuing effort to uh, um, uh, make sure that war criminals uh, are brought to justice in The Hague and uh, tried uh, f uh, to see if the indictments are, are uh, uh, if they stand up. Uh, from the very beginning, our policy uh, has been that uh, war criminals should turn themselves in um, or they should be uh, apprehended by local police forces in, um, in uh, times when, uh, uh, when the uh, S-4 forces or I-4 forces have run across uh, war criminals in the course of their ordinary business, um, they have uh, um, apprehended them and turned them over to The, to the Hague uh, for trial. Uh, that's my understanding of what happened this time. That, uh, but our policy continues, and that is that all indicted war criminals should be in The Hague for trial. But, but this was clearly a trap set. I mean, this wasn't just in the normal course of business. This was clearly a trap that was, that was sprung on, uh, on Christic when he arrived at the scene. So, I mean, does that indicate that we are going to become more active in enforcing the mandate uh, uh, out, of, out of The Hague? Well, the international community has, from the very beginning, believed that um, war criminals should be in The Hague, and we continue to believe that. The, the basic policy has not changed, and that is that um, uh, when we run across them in the normal course of business, we uh, uh, apprehend them and turn them over to the proper authorities if the conditions are appropriate. Now, part of making the conditions appropriate is to do this in ways that don't uh, present unusual risk to S-4 troops. So sometimes uh, uh, steps are taken to, uh, to make sure that the risk is minimized to allied troops. And, and why, since, uh, he, since both uh, uh, Serb leaders uh, Karadzic and Mladic have been under uh, open indictment for uh, uh, crimes against humanity for so long, why has there been no attempt to take either one of those two into custody? Well, without uh, discussing whether that's correct or not, um, I think it should be very clear every time a, uh, an indicted war criminal is apprehended or turns, uh, turns himself in for trial, it should be very clear that this is what, uh, what can happen to any indicted war criminal um, uh, in Bosnia. Uh, did you mean to suggest that there have been active to take care of the no, I'm just not going to. Uh, I'm just not going to comment on your characterization of it. The the lesson is that um, that these uh, indicted war criminals should be in the Hague for trial, and that applies to Karadzic and it applies to Mladic as well. Yes. Just a quick one back to the Pakistan and F-16 issue. Um, although there hasn't been any formal announcement that they would go to New Zealand, is there an expectation? on the Pentagon's part that if and when such a deal <coughs> was made, that Pakistan would be reimbursed with the proceeds from such a sale? Because from what I remember, they paid a certain amount for the 16s that they never received. And that's their gripe. Uh, President Clinton um, ha has made it clear that he'd like to resolve this in a mutually uh, beneficial way. And uh, I think that um, that would uh, obviously involve some sort of uh, compensation to the Pakistanis. How that uh, can be done is still being worked out, or if it can be done is still being worked out. This is something the administration has been working on for some time. Thank you. Thank you very much. Sure.